Seriously, you don't understand how pay-to-win Diablo Immortal is. My first Diablo Immortal pay-to-win video, I made a comment below mm -hmm. saying, we haven't even talked about Resonance, by the way. <laughs> because yep. I honestly didn't think the data existed. I thought, I didn't mm -hmm. think I was going to be able to be making this video that I'm making right now until after release at the soonest. Give me one second. I, I reached out, I emailed Jeff Bezos, and he gave us some info about this system. Really? Uh, about this Thank system you, that Jeff. most of us will never, ever get to touch. Also, before I forget, big shouts out, out to Nakabon. I hope I <laughs> pronounce your name right. I'll put your uh, okay. your name on the screen. No, I'm saying for five subs. Appreciate video. it. Big Thank you very out. much. Like I, I would never have gotten any of this information for you guys without... Nakabon, thank you so much. Okay. First, sure. I want to start off with some basics that I kind of this is about Diablo to Immortal. Deliver in the first video. By the way, what I'm going to do with Diablo Immortal is I want to play the game as a free-to-play player, to the extent that I hit the wall, and then the moment that I hit the wall, I'm going to start spending real money, and I'm going to start spending real money, and we're going to see how far that gets me, and you guys are going to keep it with me. And let me know how far you're getting, and we see who gets how far. Yeah, it's that simple. It's going to be our character, exactly. So, the very basics of pay to win. Two minutes. Legendary in. gems. Okay. They're the main source of pay to win in Diablo Immortal. All right. They can be found in Elder Rifts. Yeah. And only if you have legendary crests or rare crests, which you can use to empower the rift. Got it. You can buy unlimited legendary crests in the shop with eternal orbs. How much? The currency that must be paid for. Oh. For a 100% chance at so a like royal gem crystals. Drop. There are virtually no sources for earning. You know how you can tell if a game is pay to win? Is how many currencies it has. If a game has more than two currencies, it's pay to win. Yep, it's pay to win. Uh, somehow, you, you, you might not know right off the surface value, but if it's like, okay, well, basically, you have your shiny crystals, and then your shiny crystals, you have to buy the blue crystals, and then with the blue crystals, you have to buy your emblems of favor. Now, emblems of favor are earnable in-game, but you can also buy emblems of favor with blue crystals, which you can buy with uh, orange crystals, which you can buy with real money. So then, also, there's another way you can do it, is that during promotional events, we also have red crystals now red crystals that's if you spend money within a certain period of time and then you can use red crystals to buy more emblems of favor and that way you can make as much money as possible yeah exactly so the moment that you see more than two currencies in any video game that, that's like for like purchasing microtransactions the game's pay to win like nine times out of ten legendary crest for free uh there are different rarities of legendary gems as well from yep. one star to five times. star Mm -hmm. Five star are extremely rare. Rare crests you can get and earn for free, usually about three to five per but Path of Exile? Why, why, y'all, why y'all make these these dumb comparisons? Doesn't Poe only have like one currency? You just spend real money and then you have the currency and you buy things. Has two currencies? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure. Like that's I, I, I've I've spent over a thousand dollars in Poe. That's what it's always been. Yeah, it's microtransactions only. Yeah, like I I. They're trying to gotcha, yeah, but like only just for visual microtransactions, not the coins. Yeah, no, I, I just like oh, I'm just saying like it's it's like I, I don't understand why you're trying to why y'all trying to do this this gotcha shit. It, it's it's obviously not the same. I said it has two currencies. Like it's not it's not what I said. You just like just it's so annoying. Hey. But they only have a 10% chance to get you a one-star legendary gem drop. 10% and 2 .5 chance. And 2.5% chance to get a two-star legendary gem drop. Meaning you cannot... Oh, wait. There's five stars. ...not get five-star legendary gem drops from Rare Crests. So... What? Most free-to-play players will never see a five-star gem. Oh, wow. So that part can be kind of confusing. But if we look at... Look back at this video that I just had playing Holy while I was shit. crafting some legendary gems. There was an echoing shade here with two out of five stars. He got lucky, man. Hey, who says free players, free to play players don't get to eat too, man? Hell yeah. So the five star gems can be two, three, or four, or five out of five stars, meaning this has the potential to be mm -hmm. a five star gem, but it has the stats right now of a two star gem. Mm -hmm. If I do find another echoing shade that has three, four, or five out of five stars, right. it's I can numbers, use right? that one to upgrade the stars on this one though. 
Mm. So recently, data miners actually dropped some data for the actual probabilities of legendary gems. As you can see here, one star for rare crest, one wow. star is 10%, two stars, 2.5%. And you can't even get five star gems from rare crests, which are the, the crests that you mostly get as a free to play player. This was actually news to me. I How I thought it worked was that when a legendary gem drops, it just basically rolls as a chance to drop of from the whole legendary gem pool. Of course, some will be more common than others. But um, yeah, this was news to me. So <laughs> like this. So the rare crests are the ones that you get in the video game. And the legendary crests are the ones that you get on the store. Is that right? I just want to make sure that I'm on the same page with you guys. So yes, yes, that's the way it goes. So 0 0.05, let's talk a little bit about statistics. Whenever there's a, a, a number right here, a one right here, that means it's one in a hundred. Whenever there's a one right here behind this decimal, that's one in a thousand. Whenever there's a one right here, that means it's one in 10,000. So Blizzard, uh, they're being nice, they're being reasonable, and it's only one in 5,000. Am, am I right about this? This is one in 5,000 for like a, uh, uh, the five of five? It's one in 2,000? Did I do the math wrong? Maybe I did. Okay, let's say it's one in 2,000, sure. And uh, yeah, maybe I did the math wrong, fine. And uh, one in 2,000. Holy fucking shit. And also, like, by the way, the way that you're going to get these is not by getting them randomly. It's every 50 of them, you get five stars. So how much is it to buy each one? The pay to one is actually far, far worse than I actually originally thought. Because as a free-to-play player, you're most likely to never see a five-star gem well, What's drop the difference between the two? Because you just basically never get legendary crests. Okay. Um, I mean, you do, you do get a few here and there. But, um, yeah, a few isn't going to get you... Uh, from these ch these chances here, <laughs> I think that really the thing that's that's extremely uh, I don't know like really what the word is for it. What what's very telling about this is that you get a, a pity drop every fifty of them. So you know that if you spend, however I don't know if each one's like five dollars, two hundred and fifty dollars, uh, you'll get one five star legendary. You'll probably you probably get one check, a year. Or sorry like guys. That. From the from these probabilities, but yeah, um, apparently there's a pity system too. But Thank for God. every 50 legendary crests, you are guaranteed to get one five star. Mm -hmm. Not not a five out of five star, but you know it could be one and two out of five, and so on. Um, the the funny thing about that is, for one hundred dollars, guess how many uh, legendary crests you get for one hundred dollars? How many? Forty five. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Bro, that's cheap. So we spend a thousand dollars and we get nine five star legendary gems. That's cheap. So that that's yeah, that there we go. So we spend a thousand dollars, we get all legendary five star gems, and we just go into PvP and we absolutely fucking dominate people, guys. Yeah, that's cheap. It's only a thousand dollars a day. That's yeah, I mean that's pretty standard practice in most of these games, but yeah. Um, so yeah, you're gonna have to spend the the most you can buy. It's only a thousand dollars. You can buy at once is uh, is uh, seventy two hundred or something like that. I love Which, how they do that too. That like you can buy forty five of them for a hundred dollars. So like they start they they try to get you into the mindset of you're gonna spend a lot of money. It's not something like where you just spend a hundred dollars and you get 50 of them and it's that simple no it's always slightly out of reach i fucking hate that it's so annoying man yeah it's crazy it gets you 45 legendary crests so you're gonna have to pay a little bit more than a hundred dollars if you want to get your your pity gem basically all right anyway let's get to the giga whale pay to it's win not system a five -star? that we okay. didn't talk about in the first oh, oh here we go resonance What's this? So we briefly resonance. touched on one aspect of resonance in the first video. The awakening Chaos process, dungeons. after you've awakened an item with a rank 10 gem, you are suddenly greeted by the gemception system. Okay. You didn't think you were done yet, did you? Gems you inside of gems? You got your six legendary gems ranked up in your set, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> Welcome right. to gemception. Long story short, you add gems to other gems to get even more bonus stats. Not just any gems, though. They have to be specific gems. 
Yo, dog. This uh, trick shot gem slot, for example. I would never use a trick shot gem over here. I would never use a trick shot gem for my necromancer. But leave it to Blizzard to find a way to make you use specific gems that you would never in a million oh. years consider using. Anyway, one star gems get two sockets for gemception. Holy two star gems shit. get three sockets. And five star gems get five sockets. We're gonna have to spend so ten thousand dollars. A giga whale, you're gonna be leveling up a total of thirty six legendary gems. Okay. Now remember, we mentioned these require okay, specific gems, right? Right. So yeah, you guessed it. Some of the gemception re uh, sockets require five star gems. I hope your credit yeah. rating is looking good for the next round of loads. <laughs> oh you're my god! Take out for one star gems, you get up to twenty points of resonance each point being directly related to the rank of the gem inside it. Mm -hmm. So we already have two rank 10 gems inside this one star gem, which gives us a base attribute bonus of 1% and 1%, uh -huh. that's the life and damage bonus. And then at level 10, we unlock damage. I love how like in order to play these games at maximum efficiency, you have to be one of the people that Bernie Sanders complains about. It's like if Bernie Sanders isn't complaining about you, you can't afford to play a video game on your phone. Okay, like that's just really where we're at now. It's crazy. I, I oh my god. Taken max, yeah, mega efficiency. Damage, taken while suffering, loss of control decreased. And on this one in particular, we get primary mm -hmm. attack damage increased and skill damage increased. So there are different resonant attributes yeah. depending on the gem that you awaken some are more offensive and some are more deep well who's ready all right now here's our image that where's we got my credit from card bezos uh we got resonance up to 30 we can sock it in okay. three gems and a two star gem um, well you know what i want to do is after three days or four days of this game being out i want to see where mega shields is at i want to see like who's really pushed this game to its true limits you know, like at that point, like, can you imagine that? Oh my God. We got to interview some of the, one of this rich bro. Rich is like a dolphin. Okay. Like this dude is a megalodon. All right. It's crazy. One, one star gem and two other two star gems. And as you can see here, there's a different it's a timer again? Bonus based okay. on the this gem will be that's socketed sure. in there. So when you socket in a two star gem, you get 2% at the max rank of 10. Yep. So 0.2% per, per rank. And That's crazy. Okay. The resonant attributes are the same. 2% damage. Jeff big. Bezos big. tried to cuck us here by not showing us the 30 out of 30 resonant attribute. Of course. But while I was actually making this video, this, um, this image came in that we got from... Hold on, let me find it. Okay, let's we got see it. This image here from some Asian giga whale, where we actually can, even though they're not unlocked, we can see the 30, 40, and 50 bonus. So it goes 30 to 50 is plus two percent block chance. Unfortunately, this was this is a defensive gem. Um, it doesn't appear that we have any five star offensive gems. What to, to look at those bonuses? But yeah, these bonuses, yeah, they're not that all that great. Two percent um, block chance, numbers. two percent damage reduction from melee and one percent damage reduction from all sources but the most important thing <laughs> that we see here is that when you socket in a five star gem into another five star gem this one's only rank two and it's at two percent already whereas a rank <laughs> whereas a two star was uh -huh. at two percent at rank 10. so you can see here that we're going to start getting m many more life and damage bonuses. Oh my right? god. So uh it looks it appears that you can sock it in two five star gems and three two star gems into a five star gem. <laughs> Holy shit. So this is like it, it's it actually is gemception. You know like Jesus how Jesus died for everybody's sins. I feel like like Jesus died and remove this like a fucking uh original sin like i am the person who has to walk through the desert for 40 days because of everybody else you know what i mean like i'm kind of the same thing and so i'm basically crucifying myself to save the audience to show them what it's like yeah i'm basically jesus that's what i was saying so yeah you'll have 
what is that? That's going to be 10, 20. It'll be like 26% uh, life and damage bonus. So 20. That's huge. And if you can have more than one gem and this shit stacks, holy fuck, that's crazy. 6% life and damage bonus. But again, yeah, you're, you're still going to be paying thousands and thousands of dollars to rank up two more five-star gems to put in okay. your one five-star gem. And keep in mind, we're we're only talking about one piece of equipment right now. This right, whole time. yeah. We're, we're just talking about one. Like, if you want to have if you want to have all six of your pieces filled in um, so yeah, $20,000 this freaking bird man yeah okay. we're talking uh, yeah Jesus thanks for five stars uh, total uh, of 18 subs. five star gems to rank 10 and then not even we don't, we don't even okay. bother trying to count all the other stuff when you're when you're wailing this hard you're getting all these two star gems yeah just yeah as, like the, you got millions of two star that's gems just garbage around, so yeah it doesn't matter how much how much it's going to take to level these up but right um yeah the the 18 five star gems that's you're looking at six figures at least <laughs> six figures i mean it might have if if our oh my god bro we gotta take a raid shadow legend sponsorship for this we got we gotta spend some real money like we gotta get this money back like I, there's no way i'm gonna just spend that like like that's a lot of money man like that really is it's a lot of money guys the game is free to play it's free to play don't worry about it g isn't on your side you're probably you could be looking at seven figures do a diablo um, immortal sponsor become the ultra giga. that would be really funny if i take a diablo immortal sponsorship and i take all the money from the sponsorship and i spend it on the game a mega whale some people are using the term kraken I guess there's the, the a new tier, of, a new um, tier, yeah. That we have to put into some of these pay-to-win games because, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just been un unheard of the amount of spending required in some of these games. So, yeah, yeah. I guess Kraken might be the new term, but yeah, we're talking like another 150 percent life and damage bonus. Of course, it's going to cost you way. What way I find to be really funny about this is like literally nobody would play these games if they didn't have the gambling element to them. Like, if it literally just said, hey, you have to spend this much money and you get this, nobody would do it. But people only play these games because they have this gambling element to them and, like, this, like, randomization role element to them. So, yeah, nobody else would play them. What I think is so funny is that, like, you do have places like Belgium and the Netherlands who just ban it. And so then these games don't exist over there. It's done. Yeah, you're not going to have it. So, like, whenever you get rid of pay-to-win... So, like, whenever you get rid of gambling, you, in a big way, get rid of pay-to-win games. Because most pay-to-win games revolve around a gambling system. And if you don't have a gambling system, and everything is just, like, you have to spend... Like, it literally says on the shop, having this item is $2,000. A lot of people aren't going to buy it, because it just is stupid. People uh, rationalize the spending because it happens in small increments, and every single time you could get it. More than that original Do you support uh, a band? 300 yeah. percent life and damage bonus that you, that you went for. But I mean, if you want to be the ultimate Giga Chad on the server, this might be mm -hmm. what you're forced to do. You have so now to. Now let's do talk it. about you have to the worst part of the system. Dollars on the game. You didn't think we were done yet, did you? <laughs> so as you can see here, oh during the God. awakening process. The actual cosmetic appearance of your item changes, but it doesn't stop there. It's also built into the resonance system. What? So you remember those cosmetics I was showing you in the first video? What? Well, there's no coincidence that there's four at a time, as you can see. I mean, they they tell you plain and clearly here. Uh, this is equipment adjusted by resonance. We don't know the details about how much resonance it's, is required to reach like the ultra giga oh my god badass looking motherfucker so it, it, these guys so there's like mythic raid sets in diablo immortal but instead of them taking like you have to do a mythic raid you have to have a mythic job that's incredible look at this but uh, we, let's just hope it doesn't require that you have 18 freaking and oh i wonder five star gems <laughs> but yeah i think this is the, this is personally the part that i hate the most like yeah, if you... Well, no, you have to make people that spend more money look better than people that don't spend money. You have to do that. 
because you want the whales to remind everybody else who's not a whale, I have money, you don't, you're a loser, I'm not. It's that simple. So you have to have this like because it gets more people to spend money. Yeah, and then everybody looks up at these people and everybody's like, oh, no, that's not true. I'm not going to look up at that. Yes, you will. Not you, but enough people will to where there's an economy around it. Like, look at Lost Ark. Bro, the amount of people that I have that message me, Wow, bro, plus 21? That's crazy, man. Oh my god, your gear is so good, bro. And it's like, yeah, thanks a lot. It cost me $2,000. And that's all there is to it, yeah. They're completely fine with it. Want to look like a badass? They don't even know. You're gonna, you have to spend probably thousands of dollars yeah like, yeah i'm gonna assume like to get to this level you're probably, probably two spending grand. at least at least 50k <sighs> or 100k i, I mean this that's is, a lot this is just an assumption like um why would they make it so hard to get to that's a that lot of money yeah of resonance without like some payoff right so uh-huh um, absolutely yeah. <laughs> this is fifty thousand dollars um, everybody is gonna kind of flip about oh my god that's that looks so sick yeah the thing is like you'll see people with that armor and and then like you'll have people because like this is what happens right is because the resonance it because it happens incrementally and it's a gambling thing and you have the chance for a dead 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 you have the chance for a bonus 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 and you can get that you have people that keep fucking pulling the lever. People keep fucking trying. And that's so gross. No, it's not gross. This is what people are going to do if you give it a free market. This is what happens. Like, you can be like, oh, no, that's not how it should be. It should be the way I view the world. Well, nobody gives a shit. Yeah, nobody cares how you see the world and, like, what your worldview is on this. Like, it just doesn't matter. Nobody cares. And so, anyway, this is what happens. This is the this is the logical outcome. Oh, you guys just remind me. We had drama on Twitter. Train wrecks and this other guy and, like, Nick got into it and I got into it. We got to talk about that. I forgot all about that. Just look at yeah, that like was a good time. Just comparing, like, look at the the freaking free to play Andy over here. Mm -hmm. oh, looking, looking sad and pathetic. Yeah, looking like a uh. bro. This kid looks like a loser. It's like he's the one that goes to school, and you know, all of his clothes are from Goodwill. And then you have the kids over here that have like the Nikes. They've got the Jordans, and they're sitting there looking at this kid. They're like, "Bro, like, did you get this shit from Payless?" But this kid's so poor, man. He's a loser. Damn, he's a loser. He's not gonna have any friends at school. Yeah, this guy's got Balenciaga, and and he's making fun of this guy right here. Got it from a thrift store. Back to middle school. Yeah, everybody. We all going back to middle school, man. That's the way it goes. Oh God, they did so, yeah, that shit is, to me. Um, yeah, this is a thing. This is, I, I think. Yeah, I personally think Diablo Immortal has taken pay to win to a level I've never seen before. I've played a lot of mobile games. All right, I, I transitioned to mobile a few years ago when my first kid was born. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a lot of shit. I've Typical seen a lot dad of gamer. Shit. But this right here takes the cake. I pff, all this stuff that we've just talked about in this video. Takes Man, the cake. I would love to like you know if this guy was ever interested because he's played the game. Like after the game's been out for a few days, I'd love to talk to him about it, right? And just like have a little bit of a conversation about it, and just see like kind of like how much money. Because like what my real question is with all this stuff, right? Is like how much money is it really like let's let's stop talking about theoreticals and let's look at some statistics w what level of like probability would we have to like get this stuff right bit four minutes still trying right, i have a question right. for y'all and specifically asmongold if he actually watches this video too hey but well look at when that. asmongold talks about nfts he talks about how people have the power like the the power is with the consumer and if we if we don't you know buy into the product we yeah we, that's not it's just never going to happen mm -hmm. which kind of kind of goes against what he said about like my my trying to tell people that we can speak out against pay to win like we have the power so like uh, okay. what what exactly m makes us powerless in the in the pay to win conversation when in comparison to nfts i feel like 
I don't. I feel like I don't agree because NF. Oh, oh let me think with that, and I, I'm just going to keep complaining as much as I can. Um, and Good. Look at Diablo three. Keep it up. Like uh, they shut down the money machine in Diablo with three. Uh, Diablo three. Well, I think that was because people were using it as an alternative marketplace, and there was actually like an FTC guideline, or an S. I think it was an SEC or FTC guideline that required them to shut it down because it was functioning as a secondary marketplace. So I actually don't think that it had anything to do with uh, the reception from the public. And uh, everyone complained about the... Because also, like, you guys don't remember. Like, this guy probably remembers. I mean, he's he's a fucking boomer like I am, right? It's like, you remember, bro. Like, that whenever, it, uh, whenever Diablo 3 was out for a while, you stopped selling things on, on the Real Money Auction House. Because the Real Money Auction House, every item was only $250. Well, there's a lot of items out there that are worth, like, $5,000. So a lot of things on the Real Money Auction House never got sold on the Real Money Auction House. They always got sold for more than that, and they got sold through like D3JSP, or they got sold through like other websites, or like through other places like that. So yeah, it was only $250 per item. So like, yeah, Echo was sold for $75K. Um, no, I think the Echoing Fury you're talking about was sold for $30,000, but it wasn't sold for seventy five. dollars and I remember whenever the Echoing Fury was sold, verdict time. All right, all right, all right. We'll look at it. Uh, uh. That courtroom feed. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, what was I saying before about that? Uh, so, it, it <laughs> like, imagine having to be that guy that every single time people see your face, they're like, oh, fuck, man. It's like the exact opposite of whenever you were in elementary school and you saw Bill Nye the Science Guy. It's like the moment that you saw, like, you know, there's like the VHS tape of Bill Nye on top of the fucking, uh, you know, the TV stand with like the little tray that they push around the different classrooms. They're like, yes, Bill, 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 right? This guy is the exact opposite, man. Oh my God. He said, yeah, man, I was dude. I used to love those days, man. So anyway, let me respond to what his criticism is. I'll, I'll let him finish what he's saying. And then I, I want to talk about what the difference is between NFT games and also pay to win games. Real money auction house. Now, I mean, of course, there's a lot of people that go in the comments and say, yeah, it's a mobile game. It's going to be pay to win. And yeah, there is some truth to that. And I'm I'm not naive. I don't think that the the pay to win is going to go away or anything. Um, it's definitely going to still be there, and it basically has already been confirmed. I don't think it has to be there. If they make a law against it, it's not going to be there at all. It's gone. Problem solved. And you know what? It's they can't change it anyway. They cannot because they actually kept all the money people spent mm -hmm. in the game in what? the beta. I mean, so. <laughs> Like uh, that would be a huge bait and switch if they actually, um, th if they actually changed completely how some of these oh. aspects work. Oh man, I should have played the game and beta. I could have started spending money in beta. Now I'm gonna be behind. Oh fuck. Like it, it, damn, they're holding like hundreds of thousands of dollars of of single per of single person's money some in some cases and if that person if like everything just got changed and they they fired up game at the game at release and yeah was like okay what the hell am i supposed to do with these hun this hundred thousand dollars worth of, of battle net bucks or whatever it's going to be mm -hmm. uh yeah thanks blizzard but yeah so it's it's not i know it's not going to change the what i want is just that they, they change it change the pvp because pvp believe it or not okay so basically this this guy um I, I have a long a long answer to this so we'll put on a little bit of music and i want to talk about my answer to what his uh what his question is that he's posing to me which i think is a uh it's a relatively good question i i don't think this is a bad thing to ask at all and i actually uh i, I think this is interesting sure so let me go into this so this guy asks Fundamentally, what is the difference between NFT games and pay-to-win games? Why do I think that the gamers can hold the line against NFT games versus pay-to-win games? And the answer is that I think that they can't. What I said 
is that I commend gamers for fighting the good fight against NFTs, but the reason why I think that companies are pushing NFTs is not because it's actually a profit motive and a profit incentive for them. I think what the real reason is, is because they are trying to hop onto a trend. So people saying, hey, we don't like this trend is very different than people saying, hey, we don't like a 1000% profit increase. So I think that a lot of the games that are using NFTs inside of them are not using them because they believe in NFTs or NFTs are bringing them any more money. So what the main difference is, uh, there's actually like five main differences, but I think one of the main operating differences on a company level in terms of the decisions that companies make is that the company is not making that much more money with NFTs versus pay to win. Now, yes, maybe they have transaction fees. Maybe they have like other types of things that, you know, the pay to win is NFTs, etc. So I think the main reason, not the main reason, I think the actual main reason is that they're both going to happen over time. Uh, and people are just fighting this now and it hasn't happened yet. Because I I'll get to that. That's my second point. But my first point, again, is that because companies don't have a massive profit incentive to shift all of their assets over to NFTs in the same way that they have a massive profit incentive to make the game pay to win, it becomes easier for companies to shift away from an NFT model because it's not as much of a loss of profit. And also, it's something that gains favor. And in general, the consumer base is very galvanized against it because they haven't had the slow uh, boiling of the frog that has happened with uh, pay to win. So let's talk a little bit about that and how that boiling of the frog happened. So number one is that the first microtransactions in video games were not pay to win. Pay to win was not something that happened overnight. Pay to win was something that happened over the course of hours and months and, and days and, and years. So the first thing that was a microtransaction that was ever added into the game, if I can remember right, was an armor on a horse in an Oblivion game. Am I right about that? That was the first one? Yeah, that was the, the first microtransaction that pretty much was ever added into the game. Well, guess what? That armor didn't make your horse stronger. That armor didn't make your uh, your character you know more powerful, etc. Uh, it just it opened the door. And, and this is something like people say slippery slope. I disagree. I think it's called getting your foot in the door, which is a very common and codified sales technique, which is as soon as you can get the person to agree on one thing, as soon as you can get the person to concede on one thing, that's whenever you fundamentally get your foot in the door. And the idea behind it is that, like, what is the metaphor of getting your foot in the door? The metaphor is whenever salesmen used to go door to door, and as soon as a person would let a salesman into their house, they would get their foot in the door then the chance of that salesman being able to make a sale was increased very, very high. So how does this happen? So the first time that they do it, they're just doing it with a armor for a horse. The second time they do it, they're just doing it with armor for your character. The third time they do it, they're just doing it with armor for, you know, like, let's say, like a, a different uh, emblem for your, your character's icon in mobile in the, uh, in, sorry, in multiplayer games. So this happens for three years. And any game that even slightly hints at pay to win is absolutely hated and immediately reviled by the, by the consumer. And this goes on for years, but eventually it doesn't. But eventually, a game gets through. And a game like Genshin Impact, a game like Lost Ark, because the truth is that a lot of these games that came out were fucking garbage. They were terrible games. They were just effectively slot machine simulators. The verdict is starting? No, it's not. Why are you saying that? Let's go back over to talk about it again. The truth is that players and viewers really held the line against pay to win for years. And I think one of the first games that really came in and was honestly pay to win and the Western audiences accepted it was Genshin Impact. Because the truth is that many other games that had come out before then that had pay to win elements were bad games. No fun? Nobody's having fun doing that. It's just stupid. If you think that's fun, I, I, I think you're a loser. Like, yeah, it's a, that's loser behavior. What do you mean fun? You think this is fun? FIFA? All right, sure. Let's use FIFA as an example instead. Sure, we'll go with FIFA. What, what year did FIFA start doing these uh, the, the Dream Team uh, opening packs? What year was that? The first time they did that? 2010? 
Uh, I thought it was a lot or a lot later than that, but let's say it's 2012, somewhere around there. And, and then more games start doing it. And then more games start doing it. And then more games since 2015, right? Play to earn.net. <laughs> you guys should tend to give the subs. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I do. Thank you. So then more people become more okay with it because there's an analogy of boiling a frog. And you don't boil the frog by throwing him in uh, boiling water. Because if you do that, then the frog's just going to jump out of the, uh, he's just going to jump right out. But what you do is you put him in warm water and then you slowly turn up the temperature until it is boiling and then the frog's boiled alive. That's the way it happens. So that's what's happened with pay to win games is that initially people were completely against it and they hated microtransactions completely. Then people got more okay with microtransactions and then, you know, pay to win was, you know, it really depends on how much it is and like how much of the game it is. And then people just kind of became okay with it and they said, well, you know, if you have the money, you can pay for it. If you don't like it, don't play the game. And that's pretty much where we're at right now. So whenever I say that complaining about the game won't really matter, I do think that's true. And I think the reason why it's true is is that a lot of people have slowly there's the idea of um the overton window in politics where the overton window is the square and the scope in which political opinions are accepted on a mainstream level so it's like you can't have like being like a nazi is outside of the overton window uh being like a communist that thinks that you know like anybody who believes in capitalism is like evil uh th this is also outside of the overton window and, and people like the overton window shifts and so like during mccarthyism obviously it was very much on the right side of the spectrum uh now it's a little bit closer to the left but it's much closer to the middle than it was back then of course and so anyway, uh, the way this happens is that the, you know, proverbial Overton window of the acceptance that gamers have for this kind of content, I think has been shifting for years. And I think that you can see this in the way that people respond to people like this, people like me. And whenever I get upset about like a storm out in Warcraft and I have people defending it and people are okay with it. So what ends up happening is that slowly people become more and more acclimated to this kind of content. And as they become more acclimated to it, it becomes just commonplace. And also you have another factor is like this guy said, you know, he's like, he doesn't play console games as much anymore because now he's a dad and he's fucking busy, right? With his kid. What's happening is that the people that are inside of the group that doesn't like pay to win and will not play pay to win is being, is being shrunk from both sides because the younger people are getting older. And then the more younger people that come into the market playing video games have been conditioned into this being the norm. And then the older people that are in the market, people like him, people like me, people like my other friends, right? That are now 30, they're managers of places, etc. Those people are leaving the gaming market entirely. Like my friend Hayden, uh, like I don't even know if he plays any video games anymore. He's got like three fucking kids, a wife, and he's a manager at a department store. He doesn't have time. But we raided ICC together. We used to do Cataclysm Heroics, and he would play every day. But now he's fucking busy because he's got a family. It's not like oh he quit gaming because of pay to win. No, bro, he quit he quit gaming because of life. And. Hayden might come back and, you know, every once in a while, you know, he plays, we play again. It is a thing, right? That's really cool. But the fact is that he doesn't play games as much as he used to. And so because of that, the developers are not going to continue making games for people like that because they're not really as much of their audience anymore. So you're seeing how this, this group of people, this block of people gets smaller and smaller and smaller over time. And then also, let's also talk about one of my main prime directors in creating an opinion about something, is that the idea that people will always advocate for whatever is in their best interest. And you know what the truth is? People hated pay to win whenever they were 16 or 17 or 18. And the reason for that is because they couldn't pay to win. Now those same people are 35. They've got a computer programmer job. It's cushy. They've got benefits. And you know what? They make $130,000 a year. They're single and they can spend five grand on the game and just completely shit on that fucking 16 year old and just ruin his fucking day. And you know what? Whenever you can do that, pay to win doesn't sound that bad. Absurdities, thank you very much, very much to the 10 gifted community subs. I appreciate that. You see what I'm saying? So like, yeah, people get older and they can take advantage of pay to win. And because they can take advantage of it, they think that it's more okay. 
I think another good example of this is how many of you guys have had friends, or maybe you feel this way, is that whenever you were in college, you really thought that it was a great idea to forgive student loans. But now that you're older and you've graduated and maybe you've paid off your student loans and you have a good job, you don't think it's that good of an idea anymore. There's, I, I've had like, I know like 20 people that think like this, me? Yeah, there's a lot of people. Uh, no, I still do. There's a lot of people that do. I'm not telling you guys what my opinion is on it. I think they should do that. Like I've got plenty of opinions about, I, you know, like, I'm very much a, I have a very extreme political opinions about certain things, right? But like, yes, is it really not a, um, it is clearly a trend that people become more conservative as time goes on, as they get older. This is clearly a trend that we can all agree on, is that people become more conservative as they get older. Why is that? Because generally things that become, that are more conservative, benefit the people that are older that have more resources. People simply vote in their best interest. Is this really crazy for me to say this? I don't... There he is. There he fucking is, man. That's what he, what he does, man. The master debater, apparently. Oh my god. So, uh, of course it's true. Yeah, people earn more money. And so, yeah, it's like people think high taxes are great until they get a job that pays $200,000 a year. And it's like, hey, you know what? He can get his own fucking college education. Fuck him. There's so many people that think like this. And it's not, there, there's no uh, ethics to this. There's no morality to this. There's no uh, principle to this. It's simple. I got mine. And I don't care about you getting yours. And that's it. People have spent millions of years evolving to perfect that in the most perfect way. So yes, that's the way a lot of people behave. And that you guys see how this ties into pay to win, right? How people get older, they gain access to the, to the resources. And because of that, they think it's more okay. Right, so that's another reason. And by the way, guys, I'm not even halfway done with like all of the things that I, all the points that I want to make of why I think he's wrong and why why I believe what I believe. Also, so in general, my second point about this is that it's not something that people are going to care about because it will happen over time. And even NFT games will, if they prove to be profitable for the developer, they will make their way into video games eventually. And they will make their way into video games in a way that, here's what I would do if I wanted to put an NFT into a game, is I would make NFTs and I just wouldn't call them NFTs. It's simple. Yeah, you, you, you make NFTs and you don't call them NFTs. People don't get mad about them and that's all there is to it. And then you change the language later on and you bait and switch people. And then it's like, well, we've already got all these NFTs. What are these? What the fuck, right? So that's easily how you do it. And then you trick people and then people never like getting tricked. It's harder to convince somebody that they've been tricked than to convince them to trick them. Sorry, it's harder to convince a person that they've been tricked than to, con than to trick them in the first place. People will double down on a position because they don't want to be wrong. So the moment that you have somebody holding the bag of NFTs that they thought were actually valuable, they will not drop that bag. They'll double down and say, well, you know what? They're NFTs, but not all NFTs are created equal. It's different, right? So yeah, that's what's going to happen every time. And um, anyway... Let's go back to the next thing, a change in gameplay mechanics. NFTs do not fundamentally, or sorry, NFTs in a lot of ways do fundamentally change the game mechanics in the same way that like pay to win does, but people can usually exist in a scope outside of pay to win if they choose to. NFTs affect every single player in a game. So that's why NFTs are much different in that way. Also, I think that there's just in general been a paradigm shift against NFTs culturally. And what you guys can say with any cultural movement across all of history is that they never last that they never last the only cultural movement that does last is greed people are going to greed will transcend nfts it will transcend pay to win and to the extent that these companies can make money off of it they will continue doing it yeah that's all there is to it and i do think nfts will eventually make it into gaming uh to the extent that the companies can make a tremendous amount of money off of it right now the companies don't have as much of a profit incentive to push them so it's not worth the pr hit but for pay to win games it is because they make way more money off of them that's that's really all it comes down to and like for example like he's made two videos about this 
like do you think this is really going to stop people from playing Diablo Immortal? No, absolutely not. Because the people that they're really getting with Diablo Immortal are people who don't ever watch a video about it. These are people who are just like, ah, you know, I, I, Diablo. I played Diablo 2 in high school. Oh, man, those were the days. Let's see what they got cooked up for here. Oh, okay, so you have to get a gem thing. So if I spend $20, I can just get it right now. Okay, well, I guess I, I, mean, I might as well do it. I mean, I'd be wasting time if I wasn't. So, yeah, I'll spend 20 bucks. It is what it is, right? And that's it. Then they got your money. This isn't somebody who's, like, thinking about this. And, like, this isn't... Pay to win is not something that captures... It's not about getting, ca like, hardcore gamers to spend a lot of money. It's, yeah, it's hitting whales, of course. But it's also about casting that wide net and just picking up a giant... Have you guys ever seen, like, in, like, these... uh you know, like fishing boats where they pick up like a, uh, a fucking net and it's got like a hundred fish in it. Collectively, that hundred fish will weigh more than a whale if you do that enough times. And that's where they're really making their money off of. Yeah, the trawlers, exactly. And so, how, do you guys think that I've made a, an argument that, 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 that would be acceptable to, to this guy? I, I hope that I have. I think that I've made a, a, a number of very good points, and that's what the difference is in general. So I'll go back and I'll, I'll listen to what he said again and just make sure that I uh, I didn't miss anything, okay? Like gambling streams, in my opinion? Yeah, exactly. And I think that to the extent that you are idealistic about things, what I really don't like about the idealistic perspective on things is that I think that it can be harmful because the idealistic perspective on things is distorted. It's going to be pay to win. And yeah, there is some truth to that. And I'm I'm not naive. I don't think that the mm -hmm. the pay to win is going to go away or anything. Um, it's definitely going to still be there. And it basically has already been confirmed. And you and know there's... what? It's, they can't change it anyway. They cannot. Oh, wait, wait. Let me go back. And specifically Asmongold, if he actually watches this video too. Somebody said in chat, well, I'll never support a game that, 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 that does this. I, I don't want to be rude. But you don't matter. Nobody cares what you think. Yeah, you don't matter. Like, nobody cares about you. Nobody cares about what you think. Nobody cares about what you say. You don't mean shit. Like, uh, cut the narcissism. You're not special. If there's 10 other people that'll do it, then that's all there is to it. But, well, when as Someone told... says, same to you, man. No, no, but that's you too. Oh, really? Is it me who's made videos against store mounts for 10 years and they keep making them? Do you think that I need to be reminded that my opinion doesn't fucking matter? I know it better than you do. Talks about NFTs. He talks about how people have the power. Like, So the, if mine doesn't matter, what do you think yours if we, does? If we don't, you know buy into the product we that's not it's just never going to happen yeah which kind of kind of goes against what he said about like my my trying to tell people that we can speak out against pay to win like we have the power so like uh, what what exactly m makes us powerless in the in the pay to win conversation because you can't reach a large enough audience of people to communicate that to that are sympathetic because there's a lot of people who are going to play Diablo Immortal anyway, and they're going to say, well, you know, I'll just play it and see what it's like. And that's it. And also, like, the YouTube audience, like, for example, this is another thing that I, I didn't even do, um, is that you have, like, for example, uh, let's see here. Uh, oops, that's wrong one. Uh, let's go back over here, and let's go use, uh, just a second, let me just go ahead, I'm going to make it a perfect circle. Okay, good. And then we're going to have inside of here, um, inside of here, and then inside of here. Okay, so uh, let's talk about these different concentric circles. Um, so this in here is pop of game. So this is the amount of population uh, that a game has. This is the overall population that a game has. That is the massive circle, okay? And then inside of here is going to be the population uh pop uh that consumes third party content okay and so uh that's going to be right down in here and we're going to make it a little bit smaller so you guys are able to see it three minutes okay i'll have time to finish this uh, uh this thing here 
So uh, this is the population of the community that consumes uh, content for this game on a third party website. So that means these are people that are looking at videos on YouTube, etc. Right. And so then you look in here, uh, pop, um, pop that consumes. Uh, I just can't. I can't even make it this way. All right, pop uh, that consumes content. Uh, tend on third party websites that has to do with pay to win. Okay, and so we're just going to put this over here and I'm just going to draw a brush to it. That way it's easier. Okay, and then right here, um, this right here is let's go back and let's look at it. Uh, population that consumes content on third party websites that has to do with pay to win and also agrees with your opinion oh shit we forgot one shit um okay all right all right we have to do another one the even smaller one okay there i think that should be good and so uh let's go ahead and then this little tiny circle here is all of the above uh, let's see here. Um, all of the above and is willing to act on it. Okay. So, do you see the problem? Do, do you see what my point is here? And uh, respectfully, uh, man, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't oppose or see yourself as a contribution to the force against it. I am not arguing whether you should or should not oppose it. I am arguing as to whether you're opposing it does anything. And the answer to that is fucking no. So let me explain exactly what this means, okay? Because a lot of people might not understand this graph entirely. And so I'd like to, uh, I'd like to go ahead and explain it a little bit more. So what I'm looking at here is these are concentric circles of influence that you have as a content creator and that the community has in general. Because you have the large amount of people, like right in here, this is the amount of people here that don't that play the game, but all these people don't even consume content about the game on YouTube, period. They don't even care about this issue. Like, they don't even go on YouTube to look about information about the game at all. Then this is the amount of people here that cares about uh, looking up stuff on YouTube, right? These people care about looking up stuff. They want to see what's going on, uh, et cetera, right? Then you have this circle here who are people that look stuff up on YouTube and also consume content about it on third-party websites. What's the point of this? I'll show you. So the point that I'm getting at here is this. The amount of people that you are actually influencing by talking about this issue is right here. This right there, that tiny little circle because there are a lot of people that agree with you. However, the people might agree with you, but it doesn't matter because they're not going to do anything about it. Right here, this is our influence. That, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have eight pixels of influence. Okay? That's what our influence really is. Because a lot of people hate pay to win and they'll keep playing the game. That's the truth. You know it, I know it, everybody knows it. That is what we can do. Those are the people who we can change. Is there anybody who, who is going to try to refute this graph? Please try to refute my graph. Please, I, I, I want this. I want this. I, I need somebody so I can prove them wrong. Okay? Let me see here. And uh, this will keep me... Uh, this They will keep playing because they're already invested in it. It's that simple. Yep, let's go. No, you're wrong. Oh, oh, fuck it. Oh, really? Really? You're I'm wrong, huh? Yeah, I'll refute because it's a nipple graft instead of a bar graft. Okay, all right. Let's see here. We'll, we'll read out if anybody can refute this at all. Needs less red. Yeah, you're probably more accurate about that. Population of games should be even bigger in the other circles. Okay, so you're not refuting the graph. Uh, central circle will grow in time while other circles will become smaller. I actually think the opposite, and I provided evidence for that previously. Um, let's see here. Are you being a wizard right now? Yes, I am a wizard right now, and Denizen's not here, so you guys can't stop me. 
uh, fat lack of foundation. I have established a very firm foundation over 10 years. Let's hear it again. Battlefront 2 died to pay to win. Uh-huh. A game is not going to succeed on pay to win alone. No, it has to be a good game in itself. Absolutely. Yeah, how about WoW Classic release petition? Um, does, does WoW Classic serve to cost Blizzard a lot of money? No, it doesn't. Uh, it did not serve to cost Blizzard a lot of money, and Blizzard initially thought that it was impossible to do, and the only reason that we got Classic WoW, can we get a big thank you and a heart to Omar? Omar was the one who figured out how to reverse engineer the 7.35 client into the 112 client. He is the one, and the reason, the biggest reason why we got Classic WoW. Because th initially, they thought they couldn't even do it. Yeah, they thought they couldn't even do it. It was like, it was a, a non-starter to begin with. So yeah, that, and, oh, by the way, Omar left the company. Uh, yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, let's see here. Battlefront 2 recovered from pay to win after a big shitstorm. Yes, you're right. And there are games that die because of pay to win, but for every game that lives, I think that makes it more obvious, uh, more okay. And uh, let's see here. A donkey video? Oh, we'll get to that. Uh, there's no Ray. Uh, they aren't using uh, version controlling. I, I think uh, like that early, they didn't have it back then. Uh, why do companies give content creators the amounts of money they give on ads if they only influence eight pixels? Um, because those eight pixels still are worth a lot of money. I think that's actually a very good point of what you're saying. And I think that actually is kind of a good argument against what I'm saying. Is that why would content, why would content creators and why would these marketing companies pay people a bunch of money if the marketing and what they're saying is uh, is not going to do anything? Uh, I think that, that that is a good one. Um, I, I feel like probably the reason to that is that the amount of money that they spend is going to be less. And they've obviously done a certain amount of uh, market research on like what the conversion rate is for different acquisitions and different activations on content creators. And they know ahead of time what money they're going to make and what money they're not going to make. Also, I think by the nature of them continuing to do activations and them continuing to do pay to win, it does kind of show that clearly one of them is working and one of them is not working. So like you could make an argument and I don't like making this argument, but you can make an argument. I think it's, it's, it's valid that by the nature of the fact that they are continuing to do it, it indicates that it works. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So like they wouldn't keep doing it if it didn't work. When in comparison to NFTs, I feel like I don't, I feel like I don't agree with that. And mm -hmm. I, I'm just going to keep complaining as much as I can. Um, it would just and, and I think that it is totally in your right to do so. I think that you should complain, go off of the highest peak of the biggest mountain with the biggest trumpet and play your fucking song. Like you should absolutely go and do that and be as unhappy and upset about it as possible. I did it for 10 years and nothing changed. I, I, I very much welcome people that have that mindset. I just don't think that it's going to make a difference. And I've learned that from years and years and at this point, decades of experience. Oh, not decades, one decade of experience. Got Diablo three, like uh, they shut down the money machine in Diablo three. Diablo three, when uh, everyone complained about the real money auction house. Now, I mean, of course, there's a lot of people that go in the comments and say, "Yeah, it's a mobile game. It's going to be pay to win." Yeah, and yeah, there is some truth to that. And I'm I'm not naive. I don't think that the the pay to win is going to go away or anything. Someone says, "Isn't it the exact same by voting?" I, I think it is, but the difference is that voting got rid of slavery 150 years ago, and companies still have slavery today, because voting with your dollar doesn't really matter unless people do it at a large scope, and um, that that's all there is to it. Yeah, it doesn't make a difference because as soon as the companies keep making money off of it, they're going to keep doing it. Voting with your dollar clearly doesn't work every time because mo not enough people really care about it. I think the amount of people that are allowed about it give a distorted view of how many people actually care. Um, it's definitely going to still be there. And it I mean, basically paid has slaves already now? been confirmed. No, you're not. You're not paid slaves. I hate people that say that. Sorry, I'm going off on a tangent again. That is the most privileged fucking, like, uh, you know, like, upper middle class fucking, like, socialist or fucking uh, political activist. I, I don't want to say socialist because people think this all over the political spectrum. Political activist take. As if you think that you even have the slightest bit in common with an actual fucking slave that they could literally kill because the person wasn't working hard enough. You have no idea. Like, it is unironically privileged. Stop it.
It's nothing remotely close to slavery. Shut up. And you know what? It's they can't change it anymore. Fully they out of touch. Yeah. Because the they actually yeah, sure. kept all the it's money people spent. Okay, here we go. In the game. Let, let's get in back the beta, on topic. I mean. So <laughs> like uh, that would be a huge bait and switch if they actually um, uh -huh. If they actually changed completely how some of these pay-to-win aspects work, like they're holding like hundreds of thousands of dollars of of mm -hmm. single per of single person's money, some in some cases. Yep. And if that person, if like everything just got changed and they they fired up game at the game at release and was like, okay, what the hell am I supposed to do mm -hmm. with these hundred, this hundred thousand dollars worth of of yeah? Money? They're obviously going to let people keep their money. Uh, I mean, like, that's obviously what it is. I, I know people are, like, trying to hang on to that slavery statement I made. At the end of the video, if you guys still are fucking in your feelings about what I said, I'll talk about it. But just just know that I'm right and you're wrong. And I will explain it in thorough detail. And I might even use a graph. So, uh, if, if yeah, if you're getting in your feelings about that comment, uh, I'm right, you're wrong, and I'll explain why. But let me just finish the video first, okay? or whatever it's going to be don't forget twitter uh, drama yeah, you thanks, mentioned Blizzard. oh how could i but yeah so it's it's not i know it's not going to change the what i want is just that so the, so you know it's not going to change so but that's my whole point they, they change it change the pvp because pvp believe it or not is a very mm -hmm. very big part of this game this is not like the other diablo games there, there's very organized pvp in diablo immortal like, like yeah. mmo style organized pvp so I'd, I'd i'd be happy if they just made the pvp like lost ark mm -hmm. and basically normalized everything um let the whales have fun like watching themselves go up on the leaderboards for challenges yeah. or whatever yeah uh, shit. who can just spend more real PvP. money i don't want to be getting one shot by these guys um too bad want to play pvp in the game and the end, you're I'm... a minnow and he's a whale what do whales do to minnows they eat minnows that's the way it goes this is a circle of life but what's best for the game i do really love diablo immortal i've played every diablo game and i can honestly mm -hmm. tell you that diablo immortal is my favorite diablo game it, it, and that's man yeah, that sucks that sucks i feel bad for the guy yeah I, I i'm glad to hear that though i mean like the guy obviously it makes me feel good like maybe the game's good you know maybe it's gonna be fun probably because i'm a little bit biased because i do love mmos i yeah I'm a pc guy hell heart. yeah i mean if you just look at all all this crap behind me here. yeah he's got warcraft um, wad I legion yeah, i love behind pc him. games yeah. i love mmos and i love diablo and like diablo immortal immortal is like the perfect combination of of my favorite action rpg and an mm an mmo so right yeah I, I love the game i want i want what's best for the game and Great. the community i hope it doesn't get killed by all this pay to win bullshit um and i'm gonna keep speaking out against it thank you guys for watching um i hope you feel better informed mm -hmm. about the resonance system at least thank you and thanks for all your subs like so many i've got so i'll have to say and we'll shout out his channel at the end of this so you can get even more subs but uh i i want to say like you see kind of what the problem is whenever you're talking about how much you don't like uh, pay to win, but he's still going to play the game. He's still going to talk about the game. He's still going to make content about the game. And then over time, it just doesn't really matter. It's like, yeah, people are not going to uh, still do. Yeah, I mean, the thing is like every player, and this is the truth, right? Is he's making the same decision that every player makes. Are the negatives of the game more than the positives of the game and this is how i define whether i'm gonna play wow right now or not is is it fun to play am i getting more out of it than it's getting out of me and if the answer to that is yes then i keep playing the game and if the answer to that is no then i don't it's that simple i haven't played wow in probably a month at this point right because i've just been busy doing other stuff etc the streamers expedite the conditioning process I think streamers do play a role because a lot of streamers do pay to win content and I think it normalizes it in the eyes of the viewers. Yeah, I think so. Uh, absolutely. But I think it's going to happen overall. And, and so, yeah, that's in general what it is. Um, give me one second. I'll shit all over your opinion on modern slavery. If you want, we can talk on Discord, but you won't. You're right, I won't. Um, but here, I, I, I will respond to you 
Let me finish the video first, okay? I, I, I'm glad. We've got to debate Andy in here. Uh, he's going to explain why I'm wrong about this. Okay, here we go. So many new subs. Um, thanks from all the Asmongold yeah. viewers for all the subs and all that good stuff and liking the video. And yeah, in the end, I'm just trying to make Diablo Immortal a good game. Because I know Diab I mean, Diablo 4 is coming and, you know... D People are saying, yeah, mm -hmm. just wait for Diablo 4. It's going to be on PC. There won't be any pay to win, mm -hmm. which is probably correct. But Diablo 4 is also not going to be an MMO. Diablo like. 4 is not going to have a lot of pay to win. Why would it not be pay to win? If they already, if Diablo Immortal already conditioned an audience around accepting pay to win, why would Diablo 4 not at least be kind of pay to win a little bit i mean not, not a lot not a lot you just have to spend like maybe four thousand dollars you spend four thousand dollars your character is pretty pretty much good that's a lot less than like two hundred thousand dollars guys i mean come on diablo immortal yeah it's is, great so i still think i might prefer diablo immortal just for the mmo aspects great anyway that's it for this just video a tiny bit just a little Peace. bit and geez, just, we'll see you next just time a few thousand dollars Okay, you know what? I respect this guy's opinion, and uh, I'm really glad to hear it. Uh, I think that obviously uh, this guy's doing a great job to like bring this stuff to people's attention. And uh, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have any opinion on it, on it whatsoever, right? And, and so uh, countdown started. Hey, countdown until Amber Heard goes to jail, boys. Let's go. So let me let me go ahead and finish this real quick, okay? Um, this is a guy. Uh, we watched his first video about this. His name's Greg. Uh, first video was pretty good. I linked this channel before. I want to link it again. If you guys want to give him some support, I think that you know, bringing out this information, showing it, putting it in front of us, somebody with experience with the game, etc. Thank you very much, Greg. Guys, give him a like, give him a sub if you enjoy the content. You want to keep up with what he's doing, and uh, you want to fight the good fight against pay to win, which I think people will lose, and I think that they have been losing. However, I think that people still do want to uh you know support the people who at least try so there you fucking go guys and uh anyway yeah sub to give him a sub give him some support uh we've watched two of his videos here and uh you know do what you can and uh part three on it yeah i think that we might look at part three in a bit but right now let me talk a little bit about the um the slavery thing and how, how much time do i have about it one minute okay all right i think i can do it within one minute so, um, the difference and the reason why I think it is the peak of privilege to consider slavery in modern day America as to be any way in any shape or any form uh, equivalent to what is effectively slavery in other countries is I will give one example and then I'll give a couple of examples uh, in movies. I, I want to say that slavery in like the uh, in like the 1800s and just like in medieval times was so perverse and so evil and so horrible that even the most graphic movies don't really do it justice because if you really wanted to do slavery justice for what it really was nobody would publish that movie for example so in uh in this was in like malaysia or something like that there was an entire factory of people that were killed because they were locked inside of a factory building overnight because the people that had them working there wouldn't let them leave the building. They physically could not leave. They were locked in. The building caught on fire and everybody died. If you think that is in any way, shape, or form similar to your boss at Walmart making you show up early or they're going to fire you, you are, you are delusional. Anyway, let's go back over and talk a little bit more about this, okay? Because obviously, like this whole Diablo situation, a lot of people are pissed off about this, etc. Um, I will play the game, and I will try out the game, and I will, as I said, in the same way that Jesus died for your sins, I will pay to win with this game so you don't have to. So treat me like Trainwreck or XQC or like Rosh or Von Dice or one of the other guys, right? You love gambling. It's, yes, gambling. I love it. But you're not going to actually do it, right? So you watch them. Well, you can do the same thing with me. You can watch me, I will do it, and you can make the decision for yourself. And I will go out, and I will I will take the risk, and I will spend my money, and I will do it. I will write it off my taxes, guys. Don't take it too seriously, okay? It's just going to get right off my taxes. But, um, you know, I, I will do this. Well, let me go back over here. Thank you, Almighty Asmogold. I know, I know. This is literally pandering. I know. And I do it all the time.
<laughs> yeah, it's great, isn't it? And uh, bottom right video on the next one uh, will turn off autoplay. I, I, I don't know what that is. Uh, I don't want to worry about it right now. And so, any very generous of you, I know that. Exactly. Get it twisted. You will rebuild your life. You will become a billionaire. That's right, boys. You know it. And uh, let's see here. Playing gotcha games with the power of tax write-offs. Hey, it's a, it's a beautiful world we live in. And uh, let's see here. And uh, keep track of how much this costs. So, oh, that's a good idea. So we could do like a sub counter. Like, I don't do a sub counter. How many subs do I have right now? 40,000. Thanks, guys. Um, I've got 40,000 subs. I, I don't really do sub counter on my screen or whatever. Like, it's because uh, then the main reason why I don't do a sub counter, it's not because I am like against it morally as like a big streamer. I think that's fine. But it's just because I don't want to have to update it. Like, I don't, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want, like, another thing on my screen. It's just annoying. Like, I just, I don't, I don't want to deal with it. Like, so, uh, I just don't have it. Like, it's the same reason why, like, I think that my donations have been turned off for, like, a month. Because I did, like, that charity event for Ukraine. And I've just had the bottom. I've just had the button for charity instead of my donations. I've, like, lost probably twenty or $30,000 just because I haven't changed the box. So, that's where we're at. Pay to win counter. So, do you guys want to see that happen? Uh, do you guys want to see it happen? If I go and I use uh, the amount of... Uh, I, 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 I take out every dollar that I spend is calculated and on the screen. Yes? Let's fucking do it then. Yeah, let's fucking do it. I think that'll be a great idea. Yeah, yeah, let, let's do it. Yeah, okay. Um, what, what's this here? Uh, 20 go to, goes towards charity or wasted? Well, it, I don't know if the link still works, to be honest with you. But if you donate the money, yeah, it'll go towards the charity. Uh, absolutely. Can you do it for Lost Ark too? No. Uh, the thing is, like, um, the problem with, like, Lost Ark is that the amount of money that you spend... So, most systems are on a 32-bit integer system, which means that it can only go up to 1.8 billion. So, in order to calculate the amount of money spent on Lost Ark, we would need to completely change the operating system. Yeah, uh, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's 2.1, excuse me. Excuse me, yes, it, you're right, it is 2.1, I was wrong. Um, yeah, because I learned that because there was a boss that went over that health pool in Mr. Pandaria, and the boss bugged out because it couldn't go, the, a number could not exist in the game that was that high. Uh, and so, yes, 2.147, exactly, there it is. Billion. And so let's go over here and let's talk about video game pricing, okay? Uh, obviously, he has a third video about this. We'll probably watch that tomorrow. There's a lot of topics that I want to get through today, so I don't want to focus my whole day on just on just Diablo Immortal, okay?